Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unreal Engine tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to be covering how to set up and use GitHub with your Unreal Engine projects. This is important if you want to work remotely as part of a team. GitHub is also free and very easy to use, so let's go ahead and look at how to set up source control with GitHub and Unreal Engine. And I'll say as well, this works in both Unreal Engine 4 and 5. And all the links I'll be using in this video will be linked in the description down below as well. So the first thing we're going to want to do is you want to go to github.com and you want to create a github account. If you've already got that done, perfect, you can skip this step, but if you've not, go over to github.com and create an account. And then we want to download the git console, which again is linked in the description down below. And you want to just go onto this website here, click downloads, and then you want to get whichever one it is for you, so Mac OS, Windows or Linux, and you can just get the latest one here. Once you download that, you want to then run the installer to install it and just use all the default settings. I'm not going to be showing that here because I've obviously already got it installed, but it is just all the default settings. And if you're having any issues with any of these installs, let me know in the comments down below or on Discord or my email. One of those two will be better than in the comments, but let me know and I'll be happy to help out. Then we want to go to git large file storage or git LFS, download and install that the same way you just download the git console as well. And this just allows us to then have larger files within our Git projects. And this is especially important for Unreal because a lot of files in Unreal are too big for GitHub to handle by itself. So it needs the LFS installed and initialized on the project to be able to do that. And we'll go over how to set that up soon as well. And so once you've got Git LFS downloaded, what we're gonna do is install it. So we can now go to our search panel on Windows and we're going to search for the for git bash, which is the git console we just downloaded and installed. Once you're in here, all we're gonna do is simply type git lfs install like this, press enter, and you can see it says git lfs initialized. That is all you need to do. Later on, we will then go on how to actually track what we want to track so we can then have it working for each project, but that is all we need to do. Once you've got that downloaded, downloaded and installed, you want to then also download and install the GitHub desktop app. And this isn't required, but it just makes it everything a lot easier to use and see. So I definitely recommend getting this as well, as that's where we're gonna be doing a lot of the work too. And once we've got all of this downloaded and installed, we can now start connecting our Unreal Engine project to GitHub. So I'm gonna close all this and then go into my Unreal project, which I have here, which is just a blank, fresh project ready to connect to GitHub. Now it doesn't have to be an empty project, you can do this with a larger project you've already worked on before as well. Just obviously the larger project, the longer it's gonna to take to do this first initial push when connecting. And also I'll be saying push and pull. When you push to GitHub, you're essentially uploading changes. When you pull from GitHub, you're essentially downloading changes. So that's what push and pull mean. But once we're in Unreal Engine, what we want to do is we want to enable source control. Now in some later versions of Unreal, it's called revision control, but it should be in the same place in the bottom right down here. So you see I have source control off. I'm gonna click it. I'm gonna press connect to source control. We're gonna change the provider from non to git beta version. Don't worry about it saying beta, but you want the git here. Then git path is where you have installed git. So for me, I use the default install location. So it's C program files git bin git.exe and then the root of the repository, all of that should be good for you anyway. And then what we want to do is we want to add a .git ignore file. You can add a basic readme if you want. You don't need to, so you can get rid of that, but we're gonna have that on there. We want to add a .git attributes file to enable git LFS. And we also want to make the initial git commit, which I'm just gonna leave as initial commit. And a commit is essentially, you are saying this is what you want to push. So you've committed it into git to then be pushed to the repository. The repository being essentially where the project is stored on the cloud, if that makes sense. So there's lots of different terms with GitHub, but I hope all of this makes sense. And then we're just gonna simply press initialize project with Git. This will take a few seconds to load while it's doing it. And you see it's now adding files to source control and we can just accept settings like so. Connection to source control was successful. So now we should see that everything is all connected. So what we're gonna do is open up our GitHub desktop. Now I already have a few repositories in here. Don't worry if you don't. What we're gonna do is we're going to add up here and then we're going to add existing repository. And we're gonna choose the local path to be the path of the project we just created or are using. 
So for me, that's going to be under Unreal Projects, and I just called it GitHub Tutorial, and you want the root folder like the one I have here. So you open it up once, and you should have all of these folders in here, and we're just going to select Folder. Once you've done that, we're going to add repository like so. Then it will probably come under Other, so we're going to click on that, and it says Initialize Git LFS. So this repository uses Git LFS. To contribute to it, Git LFS must first be initialized. Would you like to do so now? So you can press Initialize Git LFS, but we're also going to be doing that manually ourselves anyway. So now we're going to open up Git Bash once again, and in here we're going to do Git LFS install, which you probably don't need to do as we've already done it, and we just did it again there but I'm doing it anyway just in case because there's no downside to doing it. It should then say git lfs initialized. Once we've done that, we now want to go into the folder of our project. So to do that, we can type cd space, and then we're going to type the path of our folder. So I'm going to do quotation marks, as I'm probably going to have spaces. I'm going to go into my folders here, and just drag it over, and then I'm going to find it. So Unreal Projects, GitHub Tutorial. Then what we can see is it's just this PC data on projects GitHub tutorial. So if I were to copy address as text, I should then be able to right click in here and paste it like so. And then if I press enter, you should see that we're now in this directory. So under D Unreal projects GitHub tutorial, and you'll see it says master as it knows we're now in the root of the project. In here, we now want to do git LFS track and then quotations dot u asset quotations and you should see if it's successful it will say tracking dot u asset and it's done and do the same again git lfs track dot u map and so now we are tracking the files of u assets and u maps so we can then have those pushed into github working perfectly and if there are any other assets you have which you want to track in git lfs as well you can do that in here just put the file extension into the track command but once you've done that we can close this and now we should be able to push. You can see we have all these different changes in here. So what we can do is we can do this two ways. We can go into Unreal and then submit content, or in GitHub we can do it in here. So we can type a summary, type a description, and then commit to master. I'm going to do it through Unreal to start with. So we'll do source control, submit content. It will check the assets to check in, and then it should tell us we have some to check in, as you can see here. And I'm just going to say initial commit, as this is still what I'm doing and I'll just press submit there. Then it says it failed to check in files. We'll show message log and see why it's done that. And this is saying that the index.log file already exists. Now you might not have this issue, but you might do. And if you do, it's very easy to fix. What we can do is go into our folder here and you should see that we have a hidden folder of .git here. If you can't see this, then you want to go to view at the top, go to show and then show hidden items and you should see it. We'll double click to open it up and you see we have index.lock. We're just going to simply delete that and you'll probably need to close your project to do that first off as well. So I'll do that and we'll try again and we'll just wait a second for it to close in the background and then we'll delete this. And actually we also need to close the GitHub desktop as well I believe. So I'll close that, try again and if it doesn't ever go away then that probably just means you have it still open in the background. So you can go to task manager, find git for windows and then end task. I'd wait a couple minutes first off just in case it's doing something in the background, but sometimes it doesn't close. And so if it doesn't, you can just end task. And now if we try to delete it again, you can see it's now gone. So now we can open up our projects again and then try and push this one final time. Again, you might not have this issue. It normally sometimes only appears if you already have pre-existing repositories. Don't know why it happens. I think it's just a bug, but if you do get it, this is how to fix it. If you don't get it, perfect, you won't have to worry about this. But this should also only happen once when you're making this initial commit. When you're pushing again later on, this shouldn't happen. So if we go to source control, submit content, checking for assets to check in. Then once it finds the assets that it needs to check in, it will allow us to do so as you can see here. And I'll just do initial commit. And in here, this is obviously where you actually write all the changes that you have made and then we'll submit like so. Then it's gonna be checking files into source control and it is then committed master root commit. If we now open up GitHub desktop once again, we should see these changes made. And so now if we go to history, you can see we have that initial commit which we just made there. Now you see there are still some changes. 
This does sometimes happen, especially if it's more at the background of the project rather than in some of the actual folders. So what I always do is when I make a commit from Unreal, I always double check GitHub as well. If you still have changes, I then just call this git commit as all the changes I've made, I've normally mentioned in this commit here. But you can obviously still name this properly if you'd like. And then you can just press commit to master here. And so that is how you can commit from Unreal or how you can commit from GitHub. Both work, but I'd always still double check both just in case as sometimes they don't work too smoothly together. But obviously that's just differences between the engine and the app. And again, dependent on your size of your project and the amount of changes you've made, this will take longer for some and won't take as long for others. That goes for the commit and also the push, or in our case, because we're doing this for the first time, the publish. So if it takes a while, don't worry, it isn't going to be broken or anything. If it does give an, and if it does break, it will give you an error eventually. So again, don't worry about it. It just may take a little long because of the size of the projects. So it's just finished committing. So what we can do now is you can see we have zero changed files. And if I go to history, we can see these two things here. And you can see all the changes that have been made and the title and description up here as well. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to press publish repository and we can give it a name. So I'm going to name this one GitHub tutorial. You can give it a description. So I say a tutorial for how to use GitHub with Unreal Engine. And you can keep it private or you can make it public. I'm going to keep this private and you can give it an organization if you want, but you will most likely not want to do that. Then we're going to publish repository. And some people say that keeping a code private is paid for. It is not, that is fake, it is free. Maybe it used to be paid for, but do not worry, you can have private projects for free and you can have as many as you want as well. The only thing you will ever need to pay for in GitHub really is extra storage and bandwidth per month, but you only really need to do that if you're working on larger projects. So again, just let this load. And as I said with committing, the larger the project, the longer this will take. But one of the nice things about GitHub is when you then push and pull, you are only pushing and pulling changes made. So if you've got a 100 gigabyte project, anytime you make a change and you want to then send that to someone else working on it somewhere else, they don't then have to download the entire 100 gigabyte project and you also don't have to upload the entire 100 gigabyte project. You can just upload and download the changes that you have both made. And so we have now successfully published our project to GitHub. So if we go back to our GitHub account, on github.com you can see we now have our github tutorial repository here so we have our own repository on github which is perfect and you can see everything is in here like so now if you want to add someone else to be able to use this then that's very easy to do go to your repository go to settings go to collaborators put in your password so you can enter your repository and then you can just simply add collaborators here by either their github username their full name or their email that will then send them an invitation, they can accept that, and then they can simply use this repo or the repository here. And what they can do is they can open with GitHub Desktop or download zip. I'd recommend open with GitHub Desktop because that means they can then push and pull any changes they have made or you have made to the project. Or if they don't wanna do it through here, what they can do is they go up here, add, and then clone repository, and they can just then find the repository from their account up here and then choose where it's gonna go down here. So it's very easy to then do. And then let's go back into the project and say we're gonna make a change. So let's just remove all of these. Let's just delete everything that's in here or some of it at least, let's just delete all of this. And then let's also then duplicate some of these squares, for example, these cubes, sorry. So we've done these slight changes here. Now let's go to source control, check out modify files and that's then gonna update the files for source control status. So we're gonna see what changes we have made. And then if we go to the content drawer, we should be able to see if you add anything in here. So let's also do that as well. Actually, let's add something in. So let's see if I have anything already downloaded, which I can add in. Let's just add in this random picture, which I've got, which I was using for another game that I'm currently developing. So this is just an AI generation of a mugshot. So you can see that's got a yellow question mark. If we were to then check out modified files, this will then be added to source control. If I look again, it's now got a red cross. And if I were to then submit content, we're now gonna push this onto GitHub or commit this to GitHub, sorry. And you can see in here as well, this is all the changes that we've made. So let's just name this 
minor modifications. So that will be the title if I could spell it. And then if I go down to, I can then do a description. So this is the title. This is the description. I'll say deleted some assets in map added in some blue cubes in map. These are obviously very vague because I've not really done anything. I also say imported mugshot image and then we'll submit that. And now these changes will be committed and submitted to GitHub ready for us to push for other people to then pull and have these changes made in their projects as well. So I'll wait for this to finish and you can see it's now committed to the master and if we go in here that now doesn't have anything as that is just now in the project. If we go back to GitHub you can see we don't have any changes but we do have a push origin here. If we go to history we have these minor modifications and it has an arrow next to it telling us that we need to push that. And you can see we have the title we made and all the different description here and we then push this to origin. If you hover over it you can see the changes it's doing but it didn't really say anything because it's just so quick for me because again I hardly did anything. You can see again the changes here so we added in some stuff and we removed all the other stuff. That is now completely done so if we go back to github if we were to refresh this we should be able to see the changes made if I go into content and then you can see we have Marcus Johnson mugshot one dot asset which is the image that we imported and under the last commit message of minor modifications we can click on that and see all these changes here so it's very easy to use really you only need to know how to use the github desktop app here as this has everything you need and if someone else pushes then what you can do is just fetch origin and then this will then say pull you pull it and then all the changes will be made just make sure your project is closed when you are pulling and make sure you don't try and push when there is a pull as that will then mean you will lose what you have done as the projects are then out of date which you can use different branches for with that but I'm not going to get into that in today's video as that then goes down more complex things but as long as everyone on your team is very well organized to not be working on it at the same time using the master branch will be perfectly fine but I think that'll be it for this video as that is all we're going to go over today just very simply how to use github and unreal engine so that you can work remotely work as a part of a team and just have your project be on github for everyone to use and access so thank you so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it and i hope you found it helpful and if you did please do make sure to like and subscribe down below so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one